What your money would say. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> is Rick Mayer. Money talks. <laughs> money talks. <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> money talks. Are you listening? What your money would say with Andrew McNair. <laughs> We're live here on What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair. We're live here on What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And for the next 30 minutes, every Saturday from 1230 to 1 o'clock, we'll be taking financial chickens and making them financial swans. But what does it mean to be a financial swan? It means to sleep well at night. And as a retiree, I believe you work too hard to not sleep well at night. No longer should you worry about pulling up Fox News and seeing taxes go up and watching another surtax, you know, wash down on your fixed income even more. No longer should you worry about opening, you know, the opening bell on TV and watching the stock market drop 30% and wondering how that's going to affect your retirement. And lastly, no longer should you worry about you or a loved one going to assisted living or skilled nursing home and worrying about running out of money. No, you've worked too hard for that. So today's topic, we're going to talk about hostage negotiation. We're going to talk about your money held hostage. And I'm going to break down exactly what that means because I believe, you know, a Swan Capital, my wealth management firm, and what your money would say, we're dedicated to peeling back the onion on important topics that you as a retiree need to understand so you can make informed decisions. And I do want to share with you an opportunity where you can get some more education on a certain topic. And we have a white paper that we just put out on our website, swan-capital.com, and it's called, Is College Worth It? And it talks about college pa uh, planning. And as a grandparent or a parent, you know that it's hard to you know, plan for college, especially if you have multiple children or multiple grandchildren. How do you go about doing that? And how do you answer the fundamental question, is college still worth it? So I encourage you to go download that free white paper at swan-capital.com and check it out. And while you're there, sign up for our weekly newsletter, because if you're tired of looking through Yahoo Finance, you know, reading this article after that article to see what's going on in the stock market, and you want just a one email that sums it up so you understand where the market's headed and where it's been going, I encourage you to sign up for our weekly newsletter at swan-capital.com. So let's talk about today's topic and jump right in, which is called hostage negotiation. And you might be saying, what are we talking about on a financial uh, talk show talking about hostage negotiation? Well, if you didn't realize, there's literally millions and millions of people that are held hostage in a certain investment. And I'm going to talk about that in detail. And to really illustrate it, I want to share with you a personal story. And unfortunately, it's not a unique story. I have this situation happen to me all the time. But I'll share with you a, a lady in her late 70s, about 78 to be exact. And she walked into my office, and one of her largest concerns when we sat down was taxes. She said, Andrew, you know, my husband passed away about three or four years ago, and he left me with a great bit of savings. You know, we worked really hard. You know, our parents suffered through the Great Depression, and we watched them, and we always saved as if there was another Great Depression around the corner. But um, we saved in our IRA, we saved CDs and money markets, but, you know, here I am, and taxes are going up, and she says, I'm worried about that. She says, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the least out of my IRA that I can. I'm taking my RMD, which if you don't know what that means, that, that's called a required minimum distribution. That's when the government makes you take out a certain amount out of your 401k or your IRA once you meet a certain age. To be exact, it's 70 and a half when the government makes you do that. So here she is taking the least she can because she doesn't know what, how long her money will last. She's, not, she's worried about running out of money. Many people I run into are taking their RMDs. And she said, well, Andrew, again, I'm worried about taxes. What do I do? And I had to break it to her that, unfortunately, her money is held hostage. And, unfortunately, she's been brainwashed to think that her money, the best way to avoid taxes, is to take out the least amount possible out of her IRA. And I had to start to unbrainwash her to get away from that method you know that methodology that you know that's the way to reduce your taxes 
So that's what we're going to talk about today. And it, it boils down to two fundamental questions as a retiree you should ask yourself. And the two questions are, what plans have you created to reduce your federal income tax in the future? And the second question is, what plans have you made to create tax-free income in retirement? Because let's face it, we can't spend gross. We spend net. And when you're in retirement, we have a fixed gross income that we have to make work. And uh, I believe, uh, to add some comic relief to that story, you know, the only difference between death and taxes is, is taxes, you know, death doesn't change every time Congress gets together, as Will Rogers once said. You know, it seems like every time Congress meets, there's more and more taxes being added uh, to our already heavy burden. So the money held hostage for millions and millions of people are what we call IRAs. So if you own a 401k, an IRA, I believe, unfortunately, your money's held hostage. And we've been brainwashed to think that is the best vehicle to use over the last 30 or 40 years. So there's over $1 trillion in IRAs. And I'll give you the history of why IRAs were created, because to truly understand why there's a problem, you have to understand why they were created. See, IRAs and 401ks were created about 40 or so years ago. See, taxes in the 70s were 70%. That's right. If you made a dollar at a certain point, they took up to 70 cents out of your dollar. And taxes haven't always been that way. See, before 1913, uh, they weren't even able to tax your income. So that's when the 16th Amendment came up. They made uh, a, an amendment to the Constitution allowing them to tax you and I for the rest of eternity. And I don't think they're going to change it back. So they've been taxing us ever since 1913. So they created this income tax that started low and then really rushed up high because World War II happened, World War I happened, and they had to pay for this war. So something really interesting, though, happened in 1943. People started getting sick and tired of paying taxes, you know, every year, big lump sums. So it's an altering time in history is in 1943 when they passed the ability to take money out of yours and my paycheck. Pretty savvy if you ask me. The government said, you know what, we got millions and millions of people that we're taking money every year from. Why don't we take it in little bits and pieces so they don't even realize that we're taking it from them? And so that's where tax withholding was born. And that's why they've been able to tax us so well over the last almost 100 years now. So we rush up to 1970s where IRAs, 401ks, which is the topic of today's show, were created. So if you're just tuning into What Your Money Would Say, I've been giving you the brief tax history of the United States, and we're talking about your money held hostage, which is IRAs and 401ks. So they were invented in the 1970s when taxes were up to 70%. See, they came up with an idea saying, well, you know, taxes can't go too much higher at 70%. Let's tax defer your money so that um, hopefully you'll save money for retirement and hopefully taxes might be lower. And you know what? It worked. Taxes did go down for the next 20 or so years. And then when we hit uh, into the Reagan period in the 80s, uh, he lowered the taxes and uh, Clinton went on to lower them even more and so did Bush. And so here we've seen taxes go lower and lower and lower. And now we're at a point where taxes at, are almost at historic lows. And we ask ourselves, are we still using the same advice that we are, that we were 40 years ago? And does that make sense? So back to the story with the 78-year-old that came into my office. She was taking the least amount out of her IRA that she could. She was taking her RMD, and she felt that that was the most tax-efficient thing she could do. And I had to, unfortunately, flip her world upside down and share with her it wasn't. And here's why. If the government is actually at almost historic lows in taxes, and I ask you a fundamental question, which is, do you think taxes are going higher or lower, what would your response be? You'd probably say, depending, even if you're a Democrat or Republican, you're probably going to say taxes are probably going to go higher. And the reason why is we're offering more and more entitlements. They're all running and will begin running deficits. So the money has to come from somewhere, or they have to cut expenses which the government's not too good at cutting expenses. So that means more taxes in the future. 
So if you are among most of the people I ask that question that think tax rates are going higher, let me rephrase what you're doing to your IRA. You're taking out the little bit you can so that as they raise taxes over time, you're paying more and more taxes out of that IRA. Isn't that kind of crazy? If you think about it like that, it doesn't make sense to keep your money in an IRA. It doesn't make sense to contribute to your IRA if you're still working. So we're going to break that down and see why uh, an IRA is a good thing and why it's not. And we're going to balance the pros and cons right after a real quick commercial break. We're back here on What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And today we're talking about hostage negotiation. So now, where is our money held hostage? So if you've invested like millions and millions of other people in IRAs, 401ks, and 403bs, unfortunately, I have to break it to you, you've been held hostage. And why is that? Well, let's face it. We've been told to tax defer our money since the 70s when they were created, when taxes were at 70%. It made sense to tax defer your money. Unfortunately, we've been going into low taxes, and the future doesn't look too bright for taxes, though. See, we've kind of went down in the valley, and we're going up the mountain in taxes-wise. And so what are we doing? We're still following the same advice that we've always been told. And here's why I like to say your money's been held hostage. Because if you have an IRA or a 401k, your money has a huge lien on it that you might not be aware of. See, if you take a pie, a 100% pie, just a big round circle, and you mark off about 20% of that pie, that's what the government owns of your IRA. Yep, right now, the government owns 15 to 20% of your IRA. But if I ask 100 people, do you think taxes are going higher or lower? They tell me a resounding, it has to go higher. It doesn't matter if they're Democrat or, Democrat or Republican, they believe taxes are going higher. And I, I believe I, I agree with them. So if taxes are truly going higher, do you want to wait till that 20% grows to 40%? If you really think about it, it makes you really scratch your head and say, that doesn't really make sense anymore, does it? We're keeping our money in an um, account that's held hostage, that has all these limitations and rules and taxes that every time we pull it out, if we don't follow, we get penalized. Well, that's a shame because you've worked too hard to have the government crack down on you with taxes and penalties on your money. So what options do you have? You've been told probably take out the least you can because you don't know how long it's going to last. And I hate to break it to you. They've been brainwashing you with the bad advice. So we're going to talk about the advantages of an IRA, and we're going to talk about the disadvantages. So you can make an informed decision to say, Andrew, I'm going to stop contributing to an IRA tomorrow and look for another alternative. Or I'm going to have an IRA, and I'm going to unwind it. I'm going to get rid of my IRA because I believe taxes are going to go higher. So let's talk about why IRAs are a great tool while working, but not while you're retiring. See, tax deferral is actually a great idea, idea, especially for CPAs. If you're a CPA, which we work with them all the time, they're great experts to have on your financial team, but CPAs are looking at last year's tax return. They're basically planning through a rear view, which is great because they save you money on taxes. Here's what's not great though, is to plan five years, 20 years in the future by looking backwards. That never works right. And so what a CPA will tell you is tax defer your money in an IRA or a 401k because you get a tax deduction. And that's not true. It's a tax deferral. You don't get away from paying taxes. You just delay them to pay them later and potentially a lot more later. So that's why a lot of times you're told to tax defer your money. However, tax deferring for a short period of time actually makes sense. So if you have a CD and you can choose a tax deferred investment for a five year period, not a bad choice. The other reason why an IRA can be a great investment is it gives you the ability to have an um, employer match. And I have to say, if you get an employer match and you're not using it right now, you're crazy. That's free money out there that you should be taking. However, if the, if the company matches up to 6%, if you're lucky, you should not do 7% or 8%. You should not go above that match because if you believe taxes are going higher, you could be throwing money to the wind and throwing money to the government, which I don't think they manage your money better than you do. So that's the, sec that's the second reason. The other reason is protection from lawsuits and creditors. 
I don't know if you know, but if you put money in checking accounts and CDs extensively, those monies are not protected from lawsuits and creditors. However, in the state of Florida, an IRA or a 401k is con considered a retirement asset. So if you get sued, it's a hard asset to get your hands on or those creditors to get their hands on. The other thing is, it's some of the ways families can put their money in a trap door and they can invest long term and they don't worry so much about the ups and downs. Now that sounds good in theory until your 401k becomes a 201k. So, you know, it's, it's a great way to save for retirement because you get a lot of investment options, but really you can get those investment options in an, a Roth IRA or uh, maybe another tax deferred, uh, you know, investment uh, like a brokerage account, um, you know, an investment options like a brokerage account, but it's not tax deferred. So there's other ways to get other investment options without having to tax defer your money. So let's jump to the disadvantages of an IRA. Well, the huge one is if you think tax rates are going higher, why are you avoiding a paying them now when you are going to pay more in the future? So that's the first one. The other one is probably why I don't invest in an IRA at all. So I practice what I preach. You don't see me putting money in IRAs because I think it's a terrible investment if you don't get an employer match. And here's why. If let's say I put um, 10 years of contributions into an IRA and after the, the 10th year, I need to take out one uh, and the 11th year, I need to take out one lump sum to go buy another investment. I need to go buy a rental house. Well, I can't do that. If I do that, I get hit with a, a large penalty at, until I reach age 59 and a half. So basically, they held your money hostage till 59 and a half. And it's your money. You've worked so hard for it. And just to be told that you can't take your own money and invest it in something else, that you have your money held hostage. I don't like that idea. The other thing is the limitation about 70 and a half. You might be familiar with this if you're getting into your 60s, that some people may start to tell you that you have to take your RMD at age 70 and a half, which is your required minimum distributions, which means that you're going to have to start taking distributions out at that age or you get hit with a 50% penalty. That's right, a 50% penalty. So if you were supposed to take out $10,000 for easy math and you don't, they hit you with a $5,000 penalty. That's kind of ludicrous, isn't it? It's your money, but the government makes you take out your money. Now, I wonder why they do that. Well, guess what? You tax deferred your income for the last 30 years, and now they want what's theirs. So again, if you have an IRA or a 401k, you have a lien on your money. So what do you do about it? Well, here's what I encourage you to do. What we do at Swan Capital is we specialize in creating what I like to call an IRA rescue plan. Because if you're held hostage, what's the first thing you're thinking about doing is getting rescued. And that's exactly what we do for families. Families are saying, what do I do instead of taking just the little RMD I can? I, want, I don't want to worry about taxes going up in the future. I want to avoid that. So what I encourage you to do is call our office at 380-9558. That's 380-9558. And our office will schedule you a free consultation. And we'll share with you what an IRA rescue plan looks like for you and your family. So again, if you're interested in an IRA rescue plan, call our office at 380-9558. So why, are, why do we invest in IRAs? Well, we get tax deferral. We get potential more return because of tax deferral. We get lawsuit and creditor protection. And we also potentially can get an employer match. But we got to weigh those cons and pros based on the other cons, the other side of the equation, which is what's wrong with IRAs, which we know is if taxes go up, we're going to be paying more taxes later. So that's the first con. The second con is, is limitations. If you want to take money out of your IRA, you get hit with a penalty up till age 59. And so if you, want, if you don't take your money out, you get hit with a penalty at age 70 and a half. It's just so limiting. The other thing I don't like about IRAs is it's created by the tax code. IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. So basically, Congress makes all the rules on your investment. And so if one day they just up and decide they want to add an extra surtax to an IRA, how easy do you think that truly is? The other things is, 
if you don't transfer it right, there are so many rules, either when you transfer on death, when you transfer when you leave a job, that a lot of families have got stuck with some very high penalties because they did it wrong. And, you know, money can be very complex unless you're using uh, an advisor like myself to help you navigate it. So you can make a lot of mistakes. And then the last way is it pushes you to take more risk. If you look at an employer's IRA options, they're going to be very risky. There's not many safe alternatives. They have certain funds, but most of them are forced to growth. And if you're in your 60s and you're pushed to forced to growth and you're still working, that can mean bad news if you're coming up to a point like 2008. So again, you want to be very careful with IRAs. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to talk a little bit more about the history of taxes and the future of taxes. Welcome back to What Your Money Would Say. So today's show is hostage negotiation. And for the last 25 minutes, we've been talking about if you own a 401k, an IRA, that unfortunately your money has been held hostage. You've been told that you can't take your money out until age 59 and a half. And if you get to 70, you have to take your required minimum distribution. And if you think tax rates are going higher, you're held hostage while taxes continue to increase every year. So how do you get away from this? How do you get rescued? Well, at Swan Capital, we specialize in creating rescue plans for retirees' IRAs. And how we do that is we create a plan where we take out over the next five to 10 years, based on your situation, an I, uh, we, we dissimilate the IRA over the five to 10 years with our unique strategy to make sure that you don't pay more in taxes than you should and making sure that your IRA is spent down so that over time when taxes go up, your money is not affected. So that when you turn on Fox News and you see that the president's added an extra surtax to your retirement account, you don't have to worry about it because no longer do you have your assets locked hostage in an IRA. So again, if you want to find out more information about that, I encourage you to call 380-9558. That's 380-9558. And I want to recap with an important topic because taxes are a thing that we, unfortunately, we forget the history of. Taxes, believe it or not, have been as high as 90% 14 times in U.S. history. And those were periods of war, those were periods of economic crisis, and if you haven't looked around, those times could always happen again. So if you're worried that taxes may go higher, that you, you know, we're here and you're in the 40% tax bracket, and you're worried that the average over the extended time of income tax has been over 60%, and you're worried that it could go up to just the average, then you need to take action. Don't wait for taxes to go higher before you take action and, and implement your IRA rescue plan. So if we look at the history of taxes, I want to make sure that you remember these very solid points in, in history. The first point is 1913, when they added the 16th Amendment, which gave the government the ability to tax its citizens. 1943, they were able to take taxes out of your paycheck, which forever changed the history of taxes because they could take out money every paycheck and you barely realize it. And then in 1970s, they came out with the IRA, which unfortunately millions and millions of people have their assets locked hostage in. So if you're looking for an IRA rescue plan, I encourage you to call Swan Capital because we started off with a story about another lady that was held hostage. She was 78 years old. She was worried about taxes going up, but she was brainwashed into thinking that the best way to avoid taxes was to take out her RMD. She was told that if she took out her RMD, that would be the least amount of taxes she would have to pay. And you, you know what? They were right if you're talking about that one year. But if taxes are going to go up, she is going to pay more taxes over time. So RMDs are a way for the government to make sure they get their uh, lien paid on your money, but it doesn't mean that it's the right way for you. And it doesn't make sure, make always the sense to be that strategy to slowly take out your RMD. There's other options. We talked about the advantages of an IRA. We understand that they have tax deferral. We understand that you, potentially you can get an employer match. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't contribute to an IRA. What I am saying, though, is if you're in your 30s, your 40s, maybe even still your 50s, and you're contributing to an IRA, 
do not contribute over the match. It may or may not make sense for your situation because if they're paying up to 6% and you're paying 9% into your IRA of your income, you could be put paying and delaying taxes for the future more than you could be paying now. So again, rethink how much you're putting and going towards the employer match. The, the reason that we have to rethink IRAs is not only taxes, but the limitations. What if you need to get access to those funds? What if you're going to retire early? What if you're not going to wait till 59 and a half? You can't touch your assets till 59 and a half. What if you don't want to spend the money in your IRA? You get penalized if you don't take your money out by age 70. Again, if you're getting into what I call the retirement red zone in your 50s and your 60 years old, these are some of the greatest decisions you're going to make about your retirement. And it makes no sense to continue to throw a Hail Mary because that's what you've been told to do. If you're looking for help, call our office at 380-9558. That's 380-9558. And we look forward to helping you.